All right, guys, so we're up here in Richland County right now. We're at a Crybaby Bridge. Supposedly, if you park at this bridge, turn your car off, and flash your lights off and on three times, you'll hear the sound of a crying baby. I don't believe it. So we're going to give it a try and see what happens. All right, so here we go. One. Two. Three. Welcome back to the Least Professional channel on YouTube and welcome to Ohio Legends and Tales. My name is Josh and uh, this series is covering Ohio urban legends and tales that you may or may not have heard from around the state. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. So what exactly is a crybaby bridge? Now there's no one point that anyone can point to to say where the legends of crybaby bridges began, but it's safe to say they really started becoming popular around the 1950s. So a crybaby bridge is essentially a place where you can go, you're supposed to be able to go and perform some kind of a ritual, or sometimes there's no ritual involved at all, and you'll hear the sound of a baby crying, and it's usually tied to a legend of a mother or somebody throwing a baby off of a bridge. So there's, there's three things that you need to have a crybaby bridge legend. The first one, obviously a baby. The second one, a bridge. And the third one, somebody to throw the baby off of the bridge. Put all those things together, put them in a legend, Tie that legend to a location and you have yourself a crybaby bridge. Now in Ohio, there's at least 33 known crybaby bridges that are all tracked as part of the Crybaby Bridge Project. This website is run by this guy who lived in New York, moved to Georgia, he found crybaby bridge legends in both states, and then he moved to Ohio and he found a whole bunch of crybaby bridge legends. Um, essentially Ohio has about 33 that are known. And the majority of those appear to have shown up um, around the late 90s, early 2000s, really when the internet became most prevalent. Even though Ohio has so many, the fact is that most states in the United States have some sort of legend tied to something called a crybaby bridge. And it's, they aren't, some of them are based in some kind of story, some of them are just completely made up, and the idea behind them is, is something creepy and scary to do on a late night when it's dark outside and you want to go to a quiet place and really get creeped out it's one of those places that you can do that now not every crybaby bridge has a ritual associated with it to get the baby to cry but the ones that do have different various things some involve flashing your headlights honking your horn turning off your car and some there's no ritual at all you just show up at a specific date and time or a general date and time and you're supposed to be able to hear the sound of a crying baby. So as it turns out historically, there is some precedence for the idea of a mother throwing her child off of a bridge. For instance, in 1976, a woman named Tanya Adams threw her two sons, one and a half year old and two and a half year old, off of a bridge. And when asked why she did that, her reason was that she thought that her and her husband were evil and that they were going to be the cause of their children going to hell, so she wanted to make sure that they made it to heaven. She was she wound up being sentenced to probation, and so she was on probation for a long time. She got rearrested for some other stuff later on, but so we know that that happened. Another known historical fact: in 1937, a woman named Myrtle Ward in Pasadena, California, threw her three-year-old daughter off of the Colorado Street Bridge. The daughter plunged a hundred feet and landed on some trees that wound up breaking her fall. Right after she threw her daughter off the bridge, she jumped herself. She wasn't so lucky. She wound up dying, and reportedly when they found the little girl, she was injured 
but but okay she was alive and she was crying for her mother who was just steps away from her so aside from these two stories as i said earlier stories have floated around since about the 1950s of bridges being haunted by babies who have been thrown off of them at some point in history a lot of the evidence really though points to around the late 90s early 2000s when the internet started becoming big where a lot of these stories kind of grew in popularity and a lot of them appeared for what appeared to be the first time in an online forum or anywhere there was no verbal legend there was nothing talked about before that time it's almost like somebody went ahead and just created these legends out of thin air as something to throw online and get some notoriety or spread some kind of a rumor. So the question then is, why does the Crybaby Bridge legend appeal so much and why is it so popular? Like I said, in Ohio we have at least 33 that we know of that are tied to legends. That's not counting any other ones that may be spread around that haven't made it popular on the internet. So why is it so appealing? A lot of it has to do with the fact that we have a soft spot in our hearts for children, specifically babies. Anytime you see a baby in trouble or crying, it becomes something where you know you, you feel it and you want to help that child out. I think the other reason why it's become so popular is because it's believable. We've had stories and not you know we've had the two that I mentioned where mothers actually threw their children off of bridges, but we've had other stories where mothers or fathers have injured or hurt their children or killed their children for various reasons. So we know that it happens. So it's something that's believable, that ties to an emotional connection. And when you, when you put all of that together and you take some teenagers or somebody that wants to get creeped out on a Friday or a Saturday night and throw that all together, you wind up with a legend that's sustainable, that stands the test of time, and you wind up with a crybaby bridge legend. So this specific bridge here is in uh, Richland County, Ohio. Um, it's one of several that I marked on a map to try and check out different ones and, and try to get an idea for why these bridges would become so popular for this legend. I think a lot of it has to do with where the bridges are at. They're in creep, usually in creepier locations or spots where there's, there's not really anybody around. We've been on this road for a few minutes. There's been a few cars pass by, but it's not overly busy. And especially late at night, there's not going to be anybody out here. So if you come out here late at night, most likely going to be all by yourself you know maybe with a small group and not to mention the fact that you know there's people that online will claim that they heard cries at some of these bridges this one included but when you stop and think about it a lot of the time those cries can be attributed to different animals or maybe not even an animal but just maybe just a strange sound caused by something off in the woods that sounds like a baby crying so you come out here late at night you're already creeped out, you're in the mood to get kind of spooky, you roll the windows down, you turn off the car, maybe you flash the lights, and, and you start to hear a noise after a few minutes. It sounds like it could be a baby crying. Is it actually a baby crying? Who's to say? <laughs> My vote is no, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. Let me know down in the comments section below. Have you ever visited a crybaby bridge? Have you ever even heard of crybaby bridges before this video? And have you ever experienced anything weird or that you couldn't explain while you were visiting one, whether it was late at night or during the daytime? I think that's gonna do it for this one. This was a uh, kind of a shorter legend, I think. Not a, not a whole lot to cover. There's, there's some in-depth stuff and I'll, I'll link the websites that I use for research down below, specifically the crybaby bridge website. Um, that website is very in-depth. It goes into everything that the guy could figure out about the bridges themselves and any history or legends or whatever goes around with them. So I use that website for a lot of my research. So check that one, check that site out and let me know if any of those bridges are familiar. Maybe, maybe you've been to Ohio and you've checked out some of those crybaby bridges. So if you're interested in seeing more of these legends and tales, make sure to hit the subscribe button should be right here below me. Hit the like button to let me know that you like the video and uh, everybody have a great day and I will see you in the next video.